Section 7.3, the hyperbola. The hyperbola is a set of all points, x, y, in the plane, such that the differences of distances between P, the point, and two fixed points, F1 and F2, is constant. So if I take the distance from D1, or sorry, F1 to P, we'll call that D1, and then P to F2, we'll call that D2, that difference, D1 minus D2, will always be the same. I could choose another point. And find the distance to F1 and F2. We'll call D1 the bigger distance, minus D2, and that'll be the same exact value, even though the individual D1s and D2 are different. And so those fixed points, F1 and F2, are called the foci. And the midpoint between the foci is called the center of the hyperbola. So just like the other types of curves, we have foci and a center. So let's look at the equations. There's a lot of information, but once we start graphing, um, we won't need everything. So just like before, we'll have a horizontal and a vertical one. Um, so we'll know the difference by the order of the equation. So x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1 will be horizontal. And when the order changes to y squared over a squared, so y squared comes first, we'll get vertical. You'll notice it looks similar to an ellipse. The only difference is it's a subtraction rather than an addition. Um, the foci will be at a. So they'll be on the x-axis for horizontal. So a0 or negative a0, and then 0a or 0 negative a for y. So that'll be on the y-axis for the vertical one. Um, the foci will also be on the same axis as the vertices. Um, so the foci will be at c0, negative c0 for horizontal. And we have a new equation for c. So it's different than an ellipse. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And then something that hyperbolas have that the other shapes didn't have is an asymptote. So we'll check this out when we graph. So there will be two asymptotes. Um, they'll be at plus or minus um, b over a times x. And the transverse axis is just the axis that everything's on. And then for vertical, the foci are still at C, but they'll be um, 0 C rather than C0. Same equation for C. And then the asymptotes just flip. So they'll be plus or minus A over B rather than B over A. And the transverse axis is the other direction because that's the one all the stuff's on. And then eccentricity is the same as an ellipse. So that'll just tell us how steep or not steep it is, uh, but the asymptotes will also help us with that. So let's go ahead and just jump into an example. So let's consider the hyperbola defined by 9x squared minus 16y squared minus 144 equals 0. The reason I know this isn't a hyperbola and not an ellipse is because we have a subtraction between x squared and y squared. That's the big hint. So let's move the 144 to the other side. So we'll add 144. 9x squared minus 16y squared equals 144. And then we'll divide by 144. So we get x squared over 16 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. So let's see. This will be horizontal because x squared comes first. which just tells me everything is on the x-axis, and we get sideways hyperbolas. So let's see if we can find the vertices, foci, and asymptotes. So vertices, everything will be on the x-axis for horizontal. So vertices are at A, and since they're on the x-axis, they'll be at plus or minus A0, their x-values. 
And so a will be 4 because we have 16, so 4 squared is 16. So our vertices are at 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. All right, let's find the foci next. They'll also be on the x-axis. So they'll be plus or minus c0. So we don't know c. Um, we know a is 4. Um, since we have y squared over 9, b will be 3. And we just learned that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared is 16 plus 9. C squared is 25, so C is 5. So we will have foci at 5, 0 and negative 5, 0. And then the final thing we want to find is asymptotes. They're slant asymptotes because they're lines. So only hyperbolas have asymptotes. And then we learned for horizontal, those are plus or minus B over A. So we will get two asymptotes, positive 3 fourths and negative 3 fourths. All right, so let's graph it, and we'll see how all this ties into the graph. So I'm just going to follow these directions below. So first I'm going to plot my vertices and foci on the coordinate plane, so on the graph. So my vertices, we got 4, 0. And negative 4, 0, so we'll go over to 4 and negative 4. Um, my foci were at 5 and negative 5. And then I'm going to create this new thing called an ox box. It's going to be 2a by 2b, centered at the origin. Um, and this will actually help us make the graph really easily. So the vertices are part of the ox box. And then um, that's where we get 2a. So a is negative 4 and 4, so that gives me 2a for the length of the box. So the trick for the box is you plot a0 and negative a0, which we already did. That was 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. But then we're also going to plot what the y gives us. So y gives us... 0, B, and 0, negative B. So B was 3, so we'll plot or mark, maybe not even plot, mark 3 and negative 3 for the Y direction. And this makes a box. It's 2A by 2B. So I'm going to draw it with a dashed line, because it's not really part of the graph, it's just helping us graph. Right, so again, 2A by 2b. So it's 8 by 6 because we're going 4 plus 4, 3 plus 3. So that's where that 2a by 2b came from. And this is going to help me draw the asymptotes. So this asymptotes just go through the corners of the ox box. So we actually don't have to find the asymptotes. The ox box does it for us. So there's one asymptote. And here's my other asymptote. They go through the center, and then they go through the corners of the ox box. And then I erase the ox box. We don't need it anymore. So we found the asymptotes without actually finding them. And I can confirm that these are correct. Notice we start at 0, 0, and we go up 3 over 4. So this one would be y equals 3 fourths x, just like we anticipated. And then the other one looks like it goes down 3 over 4. And so that's how we get y equals negative 3 fourths x. So the ox box is finding the slope of those asymptotes for me. And then the final step is we'll just sketch each branch. There's two branches, one, two, of the hyperbola. They'll go through the vertices, and then they approach, they tend towards those asymptotes. So we'll start at the vertice and we'll approach the asymptotes. So the asymptotes help me figure out how wide this hyperbola is. 
And so we'll go through the other vertices and do the same thing. And that's it. That's our hyperbola. And the process for vertical would be the same, right? My vertices would just be up here and we'd do the same thing. But we learned how to graph a hyperbola. I really like the aux box. I think it helps make this a lot easier. And then something to note is we had what? We had x squared over 16 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. If I change it to a plus, do we remember what shape this is? So x squared plus y squared, that makes an ellipse. And what's interesting is the ellipse would actually be these exact same four points. It would just be an ellipse inside the aux box. So they have similar properties. So if we can graph one, we can graph the other. So we'll graph more as we go through this chapter.